Uh, today I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit about uh, the use of geotextile bags, uh, geo bags, uh, geosynthetic bags. They, they go by a, a lot of uh, different names and here in, in this first picture you're going to see some examples, uh, a couple different uh, setups of using the, the, the geo bag. And what we're going to be focusing in on is, is how they're used, why they're used, when they're going to be used, and, and the, the main impact uh, dealing with the issue of phosphorus removal. Uh, so what I'm going to be talking about over the next few minutes are areas of or how do we choose the right technology. I know that Mark went through a lot of this, but I, I just want to spend a little bit of time, uh, just very little bit of time on that. Uh, the use of chemicals, we're going to spend a lot of time on the, the use of the, the chemicals uh, for this particular technology because this is the area that uh, has the biggest impact on how effective your system is going to be when you're using these geotextile bags. I'll also show you an illustration of a jar test uh, to see how effective uh, that's going to be. We're going to look at some results of a few studies that have been done. Uh, we're also going to look what are the, the, the pluses and what are the minuses of using this technology. And then we found a few alternatives that, that have kind of taken the geotextile bag and, and we've done some little twists to them to come up with some, some other options that uh, might, might prove to be beneficial. So what is the right choice? You know, as I've had an opportunity to travel around the country over the last several years looking at various livestock operations and also different types of waste separation types of, of systems, the biggest thing I found is we need to make sure that we understand the farming operations. And, and one of the things that Mark touched on this, which was very important, is you need to understand all, all the, uh, of, of what's going on on the farm and that this is a system. And we don't want to really just be looking at single uh, processes. We want to be looking at the entire operation and, and the whole system to see how we can most effectively meet what the landowner is looking for to meet those needs. We also need to find out what are the resource concerns. I mean, if there's really no resource concern, then why are we doing this? So we need to make sure that there's an issue that needs to be addressed uh, for the, the particular landowner. And also, what are you trying to accomplish? Are you trying to separate solids from the liquids? Are you trying to partition nutrients? Uh, you need to understand that to, to pick the right technology. And then also kind of tied in with that is what is the percentage of the nutrients that you actually need separated? If you only need 20, 30%, then that's gonna have an impact on what kind of chemicals you're gonna use and to what types of chemicals and the amount of chemicals you're gonna use and the type of technology that you're gonna use in dealing with that. So as, as we look at the, the whole issue of the use of these, these geotextile bags, when we, we use them, I've got three different examples of when we would be using these geotextile bags. First, uh, when we have a, a a lagoon, a treatment lagoon, or a holding pond that has filled with solids. And what we need to do is we need to get capacity back for, from that, that holding facility. So we found that we could use these geotextile bags to, to help to recover uh, some of that storage capacity. Uh, a second area on that would be uh, maybe you have a continuous flow operation and you need to re just remove solids so that they're not getting into your, your storage. Uh, we, we see that in some of our aquaculture types of systems where they're using these geotextile bags. And then the third one is, is simply that they, they want to separate the solids or they want to partition, partition the nutrients and they just don't want to haul water. So that, those are some of the applications that they're going with these, the use of these bags. Now, as I said, we're going to be using chemicals to enhance this, this separation process. And the reason for that is the, the geotextile bag has very small pore openings. And if we're not, if we don't use uh, these, these chemicals to cause uh, flocculation to occur, you're going to start blinding off the bag and you will no longer get separation. You'll just end up with a bag full of liquid manure. And that's what we're trying to stay away from. So this is why it's so important to understand the, the chemical portion of this. Now there's a lot of different chemicals that can be used. Uh, again, depending on the application and what the, the landowner is needing, uh, you can actually get separation percentages upwards of, of 70 to 90. I've even seen as high as 95% of phosphorus has been removed uh, through some of these. And that's total phosphorus have been removed from uh, using uh, the geotextile bags and the chemicals. 
Again, you need to make sure that you use the proper chemical rate to prevent that uh, the geo bag from plugging or from blinding off. Uh, another thing to consider is the cost of these chemicals. Uh, they, they're not inexpensive, so, so there is an expense associated with the use of these chemicals. You need to make sure that they are injected properly, that they're used in, in the right manner and in the right order so that you can get the, the best separation possible. And then also, you know, how much land is going to be needed and uh, where, where are the liquids going to run off? Are they going back into the, the holding pond, a liquid storage facility, or do they need to go somewhere else? You have to take those things into consideration when you're looking at uh, some of the economics that are associated with that. Uh, just some examples of some of the chemicals that are going to be used, uh, that are typically used for these, these systems. Uh, you do have your, your metal salts, things such as alum, uh, lime, uh, some, some of your, your iron products can, can be used, and then also uh, you do have polymers, and, and many times you're going to combine the polymers with the metal salts uh, in, in, a, in, uh, in tandem so that you can get a better separation. Uh, for that. And, and you can see an example in this, this photo uh, of what the separation actually looks like uh, when you're using these various types of chemicals. Uh, just a, a few little uh, tips that you might uh, think about if you are interested in, in using uh, chemicals and these geotextile uh, technologies. Uh, generally, we have found that the high molecular uh, catatonic polymers, they work best uh, for animal manures. But again, you would need to run some additional, excuse me, additional tests to verify which ones do work the best. Uh, we also can use these coagulants to help enhance other mechanical solid separation processes such as screw press or a belt press. These, the metal salts, and this is one thing that Joe kind of touched on just a couple minutes ago, uh, dealing with, uh, if you're using the metal salts in there, uh, they tend to tie up your phosphorus, your nutrients a little bit more, so you end up with a, a slow release uh, type of, of fertilizer or solid material of, of the, the phosphorus. So that's something to think about when you are uh, utilizing these types of technologies. So just a, as an illustration here, this would be what a jar test would look like. You would sample several different types of polymers and or your metal salts in combination to determine what would give you the best separation of, of your solids to, to form the best flocks so that you can get the, the, the most bang for the buck that you're going to spend, I guess you could say, uh, for that particular application. Here is just, uh, after you've done your jar test, you can actually go in and, and do a sample and, and see uh, this particular uh, photo here is 10 seconds after you have applied your, your polymer uh, metal salt mixtures. You can see you're, you're beginning to form those flocks. They're beginning to, to come together, congeal, and then after 30 seconds you can see that much larger uh, chunks, as Mark uh, called them, the large chunks are beginning to form, begin to settle out, and then the final photo we have here, after 90 seconds you can see that much of that material has settled out and you're beginning to uh, get a, a tea-colored water that you'll be able to, to take off or would, would actually drain out of the geotextile bag. Uh, here are just some results of, of a few studies from around the country and even outside the country. Uh, you can see that uh, dealing with the, uh, there in Illinois, the one study, we have about 90% of the, the P205 uh, that we've been able to remove from the system. Uh, then about, uh, uh, we generally see that the Nitrogen removal is a little bit less than we're going to have with, with the phosphorus. So depending, again, on the application rates, you can get upwards of 90 plus percent of your uh, phosphorus actually removed from your system. Uh, just to, again, to show you some different applications, you can see what color that water looks like, that tea colored water, uh, depending on uh, what your solid content that you begin with. Uh, you can see they can come anywhere from, from a clear color, as in this, this bottom photo, and you can see it can go T and get, get a little darker, uh, depending again on the amount of chemicals being used and the uh, effectiveness of those chemicals. So what do you do? How do you configure the, the system? Uh, this is generally what, what I've seen. Uh, we need to inject 
the, the chemicals into the line with the, the manures, and we usually have some type of an S curve or, or, or S shape type of thing to, to have a, a, a tortuous path to, to get a good mixing. That's really important to mix the chemicals with your manure so you can get a good uh, flock formed. And then that material is injected into the bio bag. As you can see here, the green hose that is going into the bag. It's where we're just going to fill the bag. And then that's, that's what we do with the system. Just fill the bag, you let it set, and then you would allow it to dewater over time. This is one of the critical elements, at least in, in my mind from what I've seen, is that you do have to have someone who is checking the system throughout time. They're going to have to verify that uh, the, the chemical additions that they're using is still, still working well and forming good flocks. And so generally every half hour to an hour, uh, the person would go in and, and, and do a, a modified jar test to just to verify that they're still getting a good flock forming. If not, then they would need to make the appropriate adjustments because as solids change, as the, the different concentrations change, sometimes the amount of chemicals being used also needs to be modified. Uh, here is, is a, a, one of the, the projects we did in, in Illinois. Uh, this is a large 60 foot diameter uh, bag, I'm uh, sorry, 60 uh, foot circumference bag, 100 foot long that we did some, some tests on. And again, you can see the tea colored water that is coming out. So they're pumping the bag, which we see here, and then the liquid is flowing out of the bag. Here you can see how the water just seeps out of the pores within, within the geotextile bag as well. Uh, this this bag is is about six foot tall. That uh, between six and seven foot tall, we fill with, filled the bag up with with liquid manure. Then overnight, we would allow that to to settle, and then they would uh, refill it, and they would continue that process until they have either uh, cleaned out the lagoon holding pond or whatever they need to do. And then after that, they would allow it just to set for weeks or months to allow it to dewater to the consistency that you're looking for. Uh, this is another operation in, in Iowa that, that we evaluated. Uh, the, the photo here in the upper left, that is showing uh, a, a different way of mixing the, the manure with the, uh, the polymer and the, the metal salts. Again, that's, that's critical for this to, to work effectively. We have a, a gentleman here in the upper right that's doing that modified jar test just to verify that everything is, is uh, flocculating properly. And then here we have a, actually a double bag system that they've set up here. And, and what they're doing is that they'll fill one bag, they'll allow it to start dewatering, then they'll begin filling the, the second bag. And then the, the third illustration I just wanted to show you was an, an aquaculture site uh, in North Carolina. Uh, this is kind of, again, showing the, the S-curve pipe to mix the, the chemicals. And then what would happen is they would fill the bag and as it would dewater, it would go into the holding pond, which was sitting right next to the bag. So as, as we're looking at this technology, what are some of the positives, what are some of the negatives? Well, one of the things we need to understand that, that, that we can get very high phosphorus removal rates, depending on your, your chemical applications, uh, again, your jar test, doing those types of evaluations. Uh, you can get a moderate nitrogen removal rate. Uh, that that uh, is not generally not as good as you're going to get with phosphorus. Uh, you will have more more of your phosphorus. Again, you get kind of look at your you know what is in the organic form, what is in the inorganic form, and that seems to have an impact on that as well. Uh, solids can be land applied or used for other applications. So that's a real positive that we have with these geotextile bags. Also used for multiple animal types. I've seen them used on uh, dairy, swine, aquaculture. I've seen them used for, for various types of things. Generally, a, a fairly small footprint is needed for this. Uh, so basically the size of, of the geotextile bag, and that's really all you need. And, and then you allow your liquids to dewater into your existing storage. So a, a very, very small footprint is generally needed for this. And then I, I think this is a real plus. Once you fill the bag, you just let it go. 
you let it set and it will dewater on its own over time the weight of the solids uh, does uh, tend to to force the water out of the sides of the bag and you're going to get a, a good product over a period of time the bag also does provide a way of shedding water so if it does rain the water sheds off and it does not reincorporate into the solid material so what are some of the some of the negatives that are associated associated with that well there is a the potential plugging that's why it's so important to use the chemicals it's why it's, to, why it's so important to do that modified uh, jar test also the chemicals themselves they can be quite expensive uh, most of these chemicals are petroleum based especially the polymers and since they're petroleum based they are going to go based on what what is the cost of, of petroleum products so you definitely have to consider consider that uh, you're going to likely need someone who's going to monitor monitor the system while the bags are being filled it's not something you just begin filling and leave you'll need to have somebody check it periodically to make sure that everything is working properly uh, this is probably one of one of the biggest negatives the geo bag only has a one-time use. Uh, what happens is uh, once the bag is dewatered to the consistency that you want, you have to cut the bag open, and then you open the bag and you go in with a skid steer loader or some other piece of equipment, uh, and you would just remove the solids. So first off, you, you've cut the bag open. How do you put the bag back together? Second, as you've driven on the bag, you've probably uh, have done either some damage or you potentially have uh, cause some blinding or plugging of that bag so it would not be effectively used for another time. So you'd have to figure out what you're going to do with the bag after you used it that one time. And, and even though it does dewater on its own, you also have to consider it takes time for that to dewater. And what I've seen is some folks will, will dewater, say, in the, in the fall, and then the spring, they'll come in and actually land apply the solids. So as, as my last thing here today, I just, just want to show that there's some variations that, that folks have been looking at. And uh, here we're looking at some dewatering beds on the lower uh, left-hand side of the screen. Uh, and what we have here are, are these porous tiles. And we're using the very similar process. We're using metal salts. We're using the, the polymers as well. And, and we're putting this in the, the dewatering beds, allow them to settle out over time. And then you just come in with your, uh, your front end loader and you can remove the solids, spray down the, the tiles, and you're ready to go again. Uh, we can see up in the upper uh, right hand side, uh, the, the last, uh, last item here, this was a, a research project that the senior, senior design class did in, uh, at North Carolina State University. And uh, they, they evaluated swine manure and they had some very, very good results. They were getting 80, 90% of their phosphorus and around 90% of their total solids removed as well. So with that, I return control to, to Rick.